Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 14.1 exponential functions. 14.1 represents chapter 14, section 1 of the Pearson A level maths, pure maths year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section, starting off with the definition of an exponential function. Ladies and gents, an exponential function is a function of the form f of x equal a to the power x, where a is a constant. Any function where the variable is in the power is called an exponential function. For simplicity, let's write y equal a to the power x. Now I'm going to look at three examinable scenarios. Scenario number one, consider a equal one. Now if a is equal one, we've got y equal one to the power x. When I substitute any x values into this particular equation, I get a fixed y value, which is y equal one. Hence the graph is a flat horizontal line cutting the y axis at one. Let's have a look at the second scenario. Consider a is greater than 1. For example, we've got a equal 2, a equal 3, a equal 4. Now I'm going to be going through the graphs of each of these equations. Firstly, if I substitute x equals 0 in each of these equations, I get y equal 1. Hence, the y-intercept is 1. Let's start off with y equal 2 to the power x. Here is the graph of y equal 2 to the power x. Let's have a look at the graph of y equal 3 to the power x. Notice that 3 to the power x starts below y equal 2 to the power x, and then after the y-intercept, it becomes more steeper. Moving on to the graph y equal 4 to the power x. In the same way, y equal 4 to the power x starts below the graph of y equal 3 to the power x, as you can see over here. And then after the y-intercept, it becomes more steeper than the graph of y equal 3 to the power x. Each of these graphs have an asymptote with equation y equal 0. The asymptote is the x-axis. The graphs do not cut the x-axis, which has equation y equal 0. Moving on to the third scenario. So, consider a is between 0 and 1. For example, we could have a equal a half, a equal a third, a equal a quarter. If we have a look at this equation, 1 over 2 is the same as 2 to the power minus 1, using laws of indices. This here simplifies to 2 to the power minus x. We can multiply the outside and inside powers. In the same way, y equal a third to the power x can be rewritten as 3 to the power minus x, and y equal a quarter to the power x can be rewritten as 4 to the power minus x. Let's have a look at the three different graphs, starting off with y equal a half to the power x. Okay, so we've got y equal a half to the power x. Then we've got y equal a third to the power x, which will start below y equal a half to the power x in this interval. And then after the y-intercept, it becomes more steeper. Then we've got y equal a quarter to the power x, which starts below y equal a third to the power x in this interval. And then after the y-intercept, it becomes more steeper. For each of these equations, if I substitute x equals zero, I get a y-intercept of one. Again, these graphs do not cut the x-axis, hence the equation of the asymptote is y equal 0. Okay, notice that over here we had a is greater than 1. Then over here we had a is between 0 and 1, but we have rewritten these equations so that now the a becomes greater than 1. Okay, so let f of x equal a to the power x where a is greater than 1. Then we notice that f of minus x is a to the power minus x, okay? So over here, we have a reflection of f of x equal a to the power x in the y-axis. So I know the shape of y equal a to the power x when a is greater than 1. Here is the shape. If I reflect that graph in the y-axis, I get a to the power minus x. That is the shape. And if I substitute x equals 0 into both equations, the y-intercept is 1. You can see that both of these curves do not cut the x-axis, hence the equation of the asymptote is y equal 0. These are the key facts of 14.1 exponential functions. Let's go through an example. Sketch the following graphs labelling the y-intercept. Part a y equal 2 to the power x minus 1, part b y equal 2 to the power x plus 1. I'm going to start by sketching y equal 2 to the power x. If I substitute x equals 0, I get y equal 2 to the power 0, which is y equal 1. 
hence the y-intercept is 1. The equation of the asymptote, the x-axis, is y equal 0. Now in part A, I'm going to start by setting f of x equal 2 to the power x. Hence the equation y is equal 2 to the power x, which is f of x, minus 1. This is a transformation of f of x. We're taking the graph of f of x and we're shifting it one unit downwards. Hence the graph will look something like this. The asymptote y equals 0 goes down to y equal minus 1. The y-intercept 1 goes down to 0. Okay, and the graph looks something like this. Okay, so that there is y equal 2 to the power x minus 1. Let's move on to part b. So I'm going to start by setting f of x equal 2 to the power x. So in part b, we've got y equal 2 to the power x plus 1. So that 2 to the power x is technically f of x, so we can rewrite the y as f of x plus the 1. This here is a transformation of f of x. We're taking the graph of f of x, and this time we're shifting it one unit upwards. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the graph. We take the asymptote y equals 0 and we shift it one unit upwards so it goes to y equal 1. So this is my asymptote y equal 1. We take the y intercept 1 and we shift it one unit upwards, it goes to 2. Okay, so my graph will look something like this now. Okay, and that there, ladies and gents, is the origin. So I can label the graph as y equal. 2 to the power x plus 1. Ladies and gents, in summary, you need to know the following key facts for 14.1 exponential functions. You should be comfortable with sketching y equal a to the power x and y equal a to the power minus x for a is greater than 1. You should be comfortable with transforming these graphs. In my example, I have to transform y equal 2 to the power x in order to get the graph of y equal 2 to the power x minus 1 and y equal 2 to the power x plus 1. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a teaching video.